Injuries to the ACL are common in athletes. This ligament serves as a primary restraint to anterior displacement of the tibia, acts as a restraint to internal and external rotation, various valgus positions, and combinations of these motions. An estimated 200,000 injuries occur every year in the U.S., resulting in approximately 60 to 150,000 surgical repairs. Despite advances in surgical techniques and optimizing rehab protocols, graft failure remains considerably high, with recent reports of up to 13%. In this video, we will answer one of the most common questions people have. How long does it take for the ACL to heal after surgical reconstruction? ACL graft healing is often described in three phases, early healing, proliferation, and maturation. The early healing phase begins shortly after the graft is implanted, where an accumulation of inflammatory cells like neutrophils, macrophages, and various cytokines invade the area and help start the healing process. Now at the same time, the implanted graft is undergoing necrosis. In other words, graft healing begins with death. So let's say a surgeon uses your hamstring tendon for the ACL graft. When they cut and remove the tendon, ideally it's a healthy piece of tissue. In fact, the strength to failure ratio of various grafts are shown to be higher than that of the native ACL before it's implanted. However, the moment they cut it, it starts to die. Believe it or not, this is an important part of the process. Following necrosis, cytokines are released and initiate a cascade of growth factors that guide the next steps for healing. Now, most people think of this process occurring equally throughout the whole graft tissue, but this is not true. You see, the graft is now living in two very different environments. Part of the graft is living inside a bone tunnel that was made by the surgeon in order to attach the new graft tissue. Another part of this graft lives inside the joint space. Now the portion of the graft living inside the joint space outside the tunnel is exposed to synovial fluid. And this fluid contains enzymes, cytokines, and growth factor inhibitors that can interfere with the healing process and ultimately delay healing within this portion of the graft. Okay, so why is it important to understand this first process? Well, for instance, many physicians will prescribe NSAIDs or COX-2 inhibitors after ACL reconstruction to minimize pain and swelling from the operation. A recent systematic review demonstrated these medications may negatively affect this early healing process. This early phase begins quickly following surgery and lasts around three to six months to transition to the next phase, proliferation. Proliferation is defined as a rapid reproduction of a cell, part, or organism. Following necrosis, the body now needs to form new vessels in order to allow cells to be repopulated and for the graft to be remodeled. These new vessels can form as early as three weeks and have been shown to infiltrate the graft in order to allow this phase of healing to occur. In other words, it's time to build a new ligament out of this graft. The replacement cells that are repopulating the graft tissue are from a number of sources inside the knee joint. For instance, bone marrow stem cells released in the bone tunnels from drilling, fibroblasts from the stumps of the originally torn ACL, and fibroblast-like cells originating from the synovial membrane, which is the inner part of the knee joint capsule containing the synovial fluid I mentioned earlier. Now, given the blood vessels and cells during this phase are coming from these various tissues in the knee joint, it's important for surgeons to preserve these tissues during operation and overdebridement is ideally prevented. The proliferation phase is thought to occur between three and 12 months after surgery. Now let's discuss the next phase, maturation. During this final stage, we expect the graft to mature and become as much of a ligament as biology will allow. Inside the bone tunnel, we observe the release of bone proteins that help remodel the area and allow bony ingrowth. This is important because this ingrowth strengthens the graft to bone attachment and improves how much force the tissue can take before failing. During this time, an important growth factor called basic fibroblast growth factor is seen on the graft tissue. This growth factor signals for fibroblasts inside the bone tunnel to invade the graft and start depositing type 3 collagen. This is when you see the total content of collagen increase as the graft tendon attempts to turn into a new ACL. As amazing as this whole process is, the body turning a tendon into a ligament, it's not perfect. The collagen fibrils in the reconstructed ligament are not organized the same as the original ACL. Although human histologic studies are limited, this is of course when people look at human cells and tissues under a microscope and observe and study them. These studies have shown that the process of graft tendons turning into ligaments remains incomplete, even if 10 years after surgery. 
This implies the mature ACL graft tissue properties likely resemble something between a tendon and a ligament. The maturation phase begins around 9 to 12 months after surgery and is observed to occur well beyond two years. I hope you've enjoyed this review of how an ACL graft heals after surgery. As you can see, there's a lot going on here. At the early healing phase, we see inflammation of the body, and at the same time, the graft begins to die. With proliferation, different cell types are recruited depending on whether they are inside the bone tunnel or inside the joint space. These cells, along with new blood vessels, rebuild graft tissue. There is a graft-to-bone attachment occurring inside the bone tunnel and a tendon trying to resemble a ligament in inside the joint space. So to answer the original question, how long does it take an ACL to heal after reconstruction? Now we can say with some confidence and with an understanding of how all this works, it depends. Thank you.